outside. Second straight match, Steph Catley will miss. A normal left back for Seattle. She's had a death in her family. And it is some challenging conditions here in Sandy, Utah today. Yes, it is hot, but it is also smoky due to those wildfires burning both here in the state of Utah and in California. You can really feel it in the air out here. And as a result, the air quality has taken a hit. Eric Tannerdahl, a referee, keeping an eye on the situation. You mentioned Abby Smith back in goal for Utah for the first time since she came out of the match on July 14th against Orlando with an injury. And Lydia Williams, who leads the NWSL with seven shutouts on the season, also started all three Tournament of Nations matches for Australia. Meanwhile, we happen to have the two winningest coaches in the NWSL facing off against, really, a lot of their former players. Vatko Andonovsky just behind Laura Harvey in terms of those all-time wins. And those two have, I think, created quite a rivalry, if not for themselves, for their players out on the field. Seattle in black and Utah in gold mentioned the conditions you will notice will have not one but two hydration breaks in each half because it is certainly a concern for these players you've got heat you've got elevation and you've got that smoke in the air so trying to take every precaution to keep the players safe Becky Sauerbrunn back in the starting lineup for Utah came off the bench for the first time in her NWSL career in the last match Katie Bowen. Press, playing it to the outside. And go out of the reach of Lytle. We've seen a couple of different looks, as you mentioned, Allie. Seeing Kristen Press get a chance to play at the top of that attacking formation for Utah. We've seen her out wide in the midfield and in a more withheld role. Yeah, she's also been a 10 at the top of a diamond when they did face Seattle the last time out. A wrinkle that Laura Harvey was trying to press this side on the Memorial Stadium field and really put Seattle under pressure. It didn't work out well in the end, but she liked the way their team played in that system. That was a one nothing win in that match for Seattle. Utah, in fact, has yet to score against the Rain FC this season. And here comes Rapino. Her touch a little too long. But if you're not excited for the opportunity to see number 15, well, you best get with the program. No, then you're Katie Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> great point, great point. But we'll see early on, Jen, you talk about the environmental factors today, how it impacts game plans. Seattle's coming out in a press right off the, the bat here. I think they can pick off Utah in their defensive end, win the ball high on the pitch, but it's something they do week in and week out anyways. They're just going to have to manage it at altitude in this heat, in this smog. Megan Oyster, one of the two center backs. Becca Moros coming up to take the throw. is lurking there inside the 18. This Oyster just clears it up the field. Both teams having a hard time really hanging on to the ball here. Here's Lola Bonta. Loses it. Jody Taylor was waiting to pick it off. Fishlock trying to keep things going for Rapino. Jasmine Spencer, the intended target for that ball. Lydia Williams trying to switch things over to Kristen Westfall, making just her seventh start of the season, first since June 3rd. That outside back position. Morgan Andrews. Fishlock and Taylor, not quite on the same page. Or Rapino and Taylor, excuse me.
There is Fishlock now, Jody Taylor. Gunny Yon's daughter asking Abby Smith to come for it. Those two not quite connected either. Well, we told you about the conditions. Dallin Cuff is down there on the field. Dallin, what can you tell us? Hey, Jen, just to, just to add a little more color to it, obviously the air quality is an issue here, having wildfires in many states, including Utah itself. They've, the wear quality is at 147, which is really dangerous for almost any person. It's down around 109 right now, which is really susceptible to people that have issues, sensitive people, primarily asthma is the most common thing. Both these teams, from talking to the training staffs, have players that have asthmatic conditions. They have oxygen behind both benches. The home team being Utah has medications and whatnot for those players that have these symptoms, should anything go awry. So both teams are prepared for the situation. The two water breaks will absolutely help as well. Thank you, Dallin. Definitely not ideal circumstances. Lytle working that far side of the field for Utah. Back to Matheson, Jan's daughter. Katrina Gorey. Utah just having a hard time finding a path through that Seattle defense. But they are doing a nice job of getting in that advanced half space. Both Gorey and Matheson finding the soft spot in front of that back line of Seattle. And they are being patient. We spoke to Harvey this week. She talked about how she wants them to take more risk, the balance of risk reward. Well, they want to play those threatening balls in behind, especially with the likes of press lurking. That's been a challenge for this team, and it's one you get the feeling, Allie, they're going to have to figure out as they hope to continue their run into the playoffs. Well, one of the things you could say about them is that they seem to be progressing throughout the season. They're used to her style. She's being able to layer in certain elements as the season progresses. And this is just one of the key players for Utah. Gunny Yon's daughter gets it there from Fishlock high above as she's going to the ground to make a play on the ball. Fishlock comes over. Gunny Yon's daughter, by the way, sitting on four yellow cards. So one more for her. She will have to miss the next match. What a battle that should be in the middle of the field between Gunny Yon's daughter, the Icelandic international, who has started every match for Utah Royals FC this season, and Jess Fishlock, really one of the best midfielders in the world, and what a great job she does for her Seattle team. And it was so interesting speaking with her this week about how her focus is always picking up on what the opponent's trying to do recognizing it and then countering it and how she can be the one to stretch the lines. We'll see if she can pull out that Utah midfield out of shape and create space for the likes of Rapino, Taylor, Spencer. Matheson came charging for that ball, couldn't quite get it. Instead, it's Seattle going the other way. Jasmine Spencer and Fishlock going after this ball. Abby Smith got there first. That high line for Utah right there nearly came back to bite them. And it was with two players biting on Rapino, winning that first ball. The space opened up behind, and then you got the runs out of midfield as well as Spencer with a well-timed run. The ball just too heavy in the end. I saw Spencer going first, and all of a sudden, here came Jess Fishlock streaking through into the space. Taylor back to Fishlock. And this is a look at it with Rapino flicking it on. Taylor always coming in behind, knowing that that's the option for Rapino. She's got her back to goal, and then Fishlock streaking out of midfield. Abby Smith really well off her line. When you play such a high line as Utah is trying to squeeze the game as such as this, she's got to be ready for those balls in behind. Just a quick note there, guys. I think it was really smart by Jasmine Spencer from field level. I was I, right on the line of the ball. I think she was offside. I think she knew it. She let Fishlock go by her, so she did not become active and kill the play. Really heads up play by Spencer. Good positioning by you too, Dallin. Good work. I'm working hard down here, guys. Up and down. I'm <laughs> pouring sweat. <laughs> Stay hydrated. No doubt. Muscle milk. <laughs> Hashtag. Letty Williams or take her time with this one. She and Lauren Barnes trying to figure out where they would like to distribute the ball. Oyster now. That's a good look at Utah's defensive shape, the way the, the wingers drop in and they protect that midfield with the five-man midfield. Press will double back. First chance for us to see Megan Rapino in our game of the week. 
this season. She's eluded us. Last couple of times we've seen the Seattle team either due to international duty or injury. But I thought it was so telling when we talked to Jess Fishlock this week and I said, really, it may seem like an obvious question, but what is the difference when you have a, a Megan Rapinoe on the field and when you don't? And she just said, and right now, she's the best in the world, and you have to be aware of her. So teams have to be terrified of her. I am in training. This makes such a difference, even with her presence, and you know she's going to give you at least two or three really good chances every time she's out there. And it's more than that. It's her communication with her teammates. She sees a lot now. She's become a wise vet, and she's able to see breakdowns on the pitch and communicate that. So she's lifting up the level of play with players around her. Andrews stepping in, trying to win and keep possession. Fishlock lifts her head, looks up, sees Rapino going into the area. Megan Rapino shot to Abby Smith, tough to handle, but she does hang on to it in the end. And right on cue, it's Fishlock Rapino. Taylor's doing, excuse me, Morgan Andrews doing the work in the midfield, goes, wins that battle, and then Fishlock with the deft little touch and behind. Corsi is deeper than her outside back bow, and so Rapino's able to slip in onside. That ball hung up really nicely for her. And you've got two really good defenses on the field here with these two teams, two of the best in the league. And we've seen Seattle already finding some wonderful opportunities in their attacking third. So great to be here at Rio Tinto Stadium in Sandy, Utah. Jen Hildreth, Ali Wagner, Dallin Cuff back together again in our <laughs> NWSL Game of the Week on Lifetime. Well, we were all looking forward to this matchup. There are so many great games going on as we go down the stretch in this league, as tight as the playoff race is. Six teams within seven points of one another, four within two points behind our Shield winners, North Carolina. Foul in the middle of the field will give this ball to Seattle. There's more NWSL action coming up tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Houston at Sky Blue FC. The Dash needing some points if they want to stay in that playoff conversation. And then 7.30, Portland at Orlando. Those two teams neck and neck, one point separating them as they sit at third and fourth in the standings with Orlando just a point ahead of Portland. the live game action at nwslsoccer.com. So Seattle's brought just about everybody up for this free kick. Here's the delivery, Spencer chasing after it, but it'll go out of bounds. Good to see Abby Smith back in goal. Mentioned she was hurt in that Orlando game we had on our air here in July. And then Nicole Barnhart, such a great veteran, the NWSL all-time leader in shutouts, taking over for the last couple of matches, even though Abby Smith was available. But as you mentioned earlier, Allie, third match in a week is a lot to ask of any player. And obviously Laura Harvey deciding to go back with Abby Smith in this one. I think what will be interesting to see how she does in this match and who's up, who's picked for the next one. It'll tell us more about where Laura Harvey is in that evaluation process. Yep, Barnhart has started the last three. And did really well. And she said it was pretty challenging coming in and, and knowing that she wasn't the starter coming into the season. Taylor headed that one down towards Spencer. Jasmine Spencer, can she turn the corner? Not quite, but she did have some help coming in in the form of Nielsen. And that'll earn the first corner kick of the match. And look, Bo Moros and Bowen on the other side are going to have their hands full with these pacey front runners. It's Spencer trying to turn the corner. She does really well, Moros does, to just body her off, ride that challenge, and then get up and make a play on that second one from Nielsen coming in. The last meeting between these two teams was a 1-0 win for Utah off a corner kick that went into the goal from Megan Rapino, And she'd started on the line on that back post and pulled herself off. 
Utah will be wise to it this time. Horn Barnes sends the ball in. Fishlock was the one trying to win it in the air. And interesting enough, Gory didn't go with Rapino when she checked off that back line. She stayed on that post. So Rapino did find a pocket of space in there. They didn't target her, ultimately. But something to keep an eye on. Teresa Nielsen, the NWSL Team of the Month in July for her, gets the throw in. Now the cross, Rapino was surrounded by three different Utah defenders. Lytle takes it over for Press. That is just well done by Kristen Press. Now to Katie Bowen. Becky Sauerbrunn, let her team get into position. But now Seattle may have had enough. Try to force the issue a little. Labonta had come back to get it. Now Matheson. Sauerbrunn's ball just goes right to Allie Long. Morgan Andrews trying to get it out into some space. Does so for Westfall. And that last attack for Utah, you could see they're trying to rotate Bowen up higher and make Westfall make a decision. And then that allows space for Gory to sneak in from midfield. So they're trying to overload this near side, Megan Rapino side. They know her tendency isn't to want to work back, so they're going to force the issue over here more than likely. Long ball up toward Westfall. It is headed toward Rapino. Taylor is on the run. Back to Rapino. She'll take the shot. Smith saves it. Megan Rapino second in the NWSL in shots taken. Allie Long called in to the U.S. team for the Tournament of Nations, but did not appear in any of the matches. Andrews up to Taylor. There's such good interaction with the midfielders and forwards for Seattle so far in this match. Really gonna force that Utah defense to be on its toes. So this is our first hydration break. We told you there would be a couple perhaps. So it's gonna break up the rhythm of the game a little bit, but certainly the most important thing is to keep the players safe on the field for more on that. Let's go back down to the field and Dallin. Thanks, Jen. I've got my small and handy dandy <laughs> thermometer here just to let you know it, it is hot. Now we had this sitting on the side though before I picked it up on the concrete in the sun. It is over 100 degrees there. When you get on the field, it's a little bit cooler, but really it's all relevant because it's incredibly hot down here. Now this water break is abnormal because not just the heat, but the air quality. As we mentioned before, there are wildfires throughout the western part of our country, including some in, in Utah here about 30 or 40 miles away. Their quality earlier today was reading about 147. When you hit the 150 mark, that's unhealthy for any person to do any strenuous activity. It's right now down around 109 here in Sandy, Utah, which is really is okay for people if you don't have any asthmatic conditions, but a number of players on each teams do have that. They have their oxygen tanks, their water, multiple breaks throughout each half. And Obviously, will be a, watching who is taking any oxygen if needed. Appreciate hearing from both Dallin and Laura Harvey there. Thanks, Dallin. Just wanted to take that opportunity to listen in, hear what she has to say. There hasn't been an awful lot in the attack for her team in this match, and that's that's really been. One of their issues this season, they went through the entire month of July without a win and with just one goal. And you could hear what she was saying there. Can, can you face up? Can you face forward? She wants more movement out of her team in these conditions that Dallin just spoke about. It, it's easier said than done. That's for sure. But a big piece to them is look for that threatening option first. Their midfielders don't necessarily have those tendencies. They like to combine. They like to keep it. But can they force the issue occasionally and look for press lurking in behind? Because if they don't start to play that ball, guess what happens? 
Seattle starts to squeeze the game. They squeeze the game. They press anyways, but now they can keep things even tighter when that second, third entry pass coming in. Yeah, the other thing to consider, too, is it's already been a really busy week. This is the third match in seven days for this Utah team, and Laura Harvey has already shuffled her personnel a little bit. It's something she'll have to be wary of. Here comes Matheson. Couldn't quite connect with press that time. Those two big wins in the week already, plus a draw prior to that. Utah unbeaten in its last three. This move by Moros. Fishlock. Taylor sitting in that pocket of space, picks it up. Time to look over her shoulder. Get it out wide. Spencer also starting her attack wide. Gets it through. And Abby Smith has had to be ready back there early. And it looks like a rather innocuous attack. It starts from Allie Long changing it and Morgan Andrews. They get it to that far side where Spencer can go 1v1 against Moro. She gets the better of her but can't connect ultimately on this final ball. Rapino just trying to sneak into that near post. And Smith gets there first. Second runner was lurking in behind. Rapino's attacking again. It bounced right down to her after it took a couple of deflections. I didn't think she saw it at first. She got hit with the ball, I believe, after her initial shot attempt. So she's still trying to regroup. Meanwhile, Seattle's still in possession. Seattle Rain come into this one a little more rested for the first time in this series all season. The first two matchups, both teams were on short rest. Interestingly enough, it was a 0-0 draw here in Utah in June and that one nothing win for Seattle in July. It's all filtering through that woman right there, Allie Long. The probing the positioning. She's pulling Utah out of shape. It's breaking that initial line of pressure. Allie, just to add to your point, I thought it was really interesting. We were talking to Megan Rapino before the game, and everybody's talking about how great she is and how she's the best player in the world. But the person she thought was most critical to their team was Allie Long coming in and really locking down their midfield, and it's really made the change coming over from Portland in the offseason. Yeah, and that was one of the, the key things that Vlaco talked about was bringing Morgan Andrews into the fold today because that would allow Ali Long to sit deeper and just play make from a deeper space because Utah plays with two defensive center mids. It's much higher, harder for Ali Long to get on the ball if she's higher in that gap. Rapino off to the races again. The touch. Oh, not quite on target. And her movement has just been fantastic. She's been coming back for the ball at her feet and then pulling away in this instance. Gets in behind Becky Sauerbrunn, that little space between the center back, the right center back, and Bowen, the right back, wide open. Beautiful ball dropped in. I'm 33 years old, Rapino going to work. Dallin mentioned it in the pregame show on the FIFA list for the player of the year. Amongst the top 10 nominees, only American woman on that list. Sam Kerr, Marta also nominated. Taylor laid it off for Spencer. Back to Taylor. Her left-footed shot. Not on target. Seattle certainly generating chances, but probably would like to make Abby Smith work a bit more in some of these. You're right, and they're coming from a variety of, of looks here. It's Taylor just cutting her defender. Two of them, in fact, fly right by. She says up on that left foot, but can't tuck it into the far post. now looking for Matheson and Megan Oyster there to head it away. Oyster in her first year with Seattle after coming over in the dispersal draft from Boston.
Ross wanting to turn with it. The ball not quite bouncing the way she hoped. Here's Jan's daughter. Mentioned some of the changes that this Utah team had to make with this being their third match in seven days. And they do have subs. They're just warming up, just so you know. <laughs> I was just about to, to say, and there are players available. Katie Stengel amongst them, by the way. She had the two game-winning goals in the last two matches for Utah. So a great option for Laura Harvey. She's been in great form. Foul from Rapino will give the Royals FC an opportunity for a free kick here. see what they opt to do if they go direct and look for just a little one flick on or if they try to redirect this one across frame because it is so central. Katrina Gorey, the player standing over the ball. And you've got Lytle wide on that left side mm -hmm. as an option to swing it in if they find her. Gorey setting up press. She was open. And it's a beautiful ball at that. See the backspin on it, just dying right into the path of press. Doesn't drop the right moment for her. And I mean, that is not missing by much. She's wide open too. Laura Harvey saying she felt her team owed Seattle one. Felt they outplayed them and just don't have the results to show for it in their two previous meetings, drawing a loss. And she said, I don't want to go through this whole season without beating Seattle. You know, it, it burns a little personal for her. She obviously was there for so long and did such a tremendous job. Here's another ball in, right into the gloves of Smith. Gory on to it. Minnie, her nickname. will switch it over to Moros. Rachel Corsi, another center back along with Sauerbrunn, member of the NWSL Team of the Month in July. That's a big difference for me right there. That long ball played in by Utah. Didn't have anyone coming in support to pick up the second. Seattle usually does. This turnover. Could turn out well if Kristen Press can get past the defense. Not that time. Matheson comes in. Two players go down. Fishlock. More international appearances for Wales than any player, male or female. What a partnership she's had over the last six years with Rapino. Spencer trying to use her speed to catch up to that ball. Just a little too far out of her reach. Rapino pressing. Solved by Utah, too. Desiree Scott was listed as questionable for this matchup for Utah, one of those key players in the middle of the field for the Royals FC. Had played every minute of this season until missing the last two matches and dealing with an injury. And then for Seattle, we mentioned Steph Catley being out. Also, Kirsten Dahlstream, Rumi Utsugi, Bev Yanez. Only chance they have of getting her back would be if they make the postseason. And she's been a, a key player for the Seattle team all season. Yell Averbush as well has been out for much of the season. Got a great feature on her at halftime to tell you about what she's been up to. Labanta looking for Matheson. The coverage, though, was there defensively for Seattle. that Utah has yet to score against Seattle in their two previous meetings this season, but a lot of teams have had trouble scoring against the rain. 
Just 15 goals allowed on the season. That is the fewest of any team in the NWSL. Nine shutouts, tied for the most. And a lot of it is because of their press, but a lot of it is because of how potent they are on the break. And going forward, it's hard to commit numbers to rotate Katie Bowen high, to rotate Moros high, because they are such a threat in behind. They certainly have looked threatening so far. Spencer, a little too deep that time, as that was an easy offside call for the assistant referee. Couple steps. Becky Sauerbrunn looking down the line, sees it, steps hard. Third straight start for Spencer. New to the Seattle team this year after coming over from Orlando. Expecting our second hydration break any moment now. Labanta looking for Lytle, who's open, getting toward the goal, but nobody there. Central. That almost seemed to happen in slow motion as if Seattle thought she'd be offside, but no flag came up. And no impetus from the runners from Utah to join in when Lytle got in behind. You don't hear a whistle, you go. Really good spot for her to be in, though, that inside out run. Taylor Lytle making the most of this, just her third start of the season, seventh appearance. And she was a 10 in college, it turns out. It was Sky Blue who shifted her to a winger, which is very comfortable in those pockets, recognizing when to make that expansive run, when to slip someone else in. Gets it to Gory, wants it back. Not where she wanted it. And you know, Laura Harvey talked to us this week. She said, we are really still in the infancy stages with Kristen Press and that partnership and figuring out where she wants it. Second hydration break on the way. We'll take a break for this one as well. It was always my parents' dream for me to go to college. And to this day, one of my biggest regrets is that I never finished. If you're the first in your family to go to college, if you took time off to raise your kids, or if you're in one career and you hear another calling, I get that, and Strayer University gets that. That's why we're teaming up, to help the people that matter the most, the students. Let's get it, together. Let's do this. There are 13,600 independent shelters in the U.S. Every year, 3.2 million cats enter these shelters. Tragically, over half of those cats never make it out of the shelters and have to be euthanized. For every green jug of Cats Pride Fresh and Light litter you buy, one pound of cat litter will be donated to shelters across America. The dollars these shelters save on litter go directly towards saving cats' lives. Cats Pride, changing litter for good. respond very well to Invisalign aligners. I use Invisalign aligners to treat overbite, gaps and spacing, and other complex cases. The Invisalign treatment has done a lot of things for me. It's made me feel more confident to be around others. It's allowed me to open my smile. Now that I'm going into high school, there's a lot of things that I'm going to be worrying about. This is one less thing I'm going to be worrying about. I'm experiencing this system on two different levels, as his doctor and as his parent. And on both fronts, it's nothing but a win-win for both of us. now after our second hydration break of this first half. No score so far between Utah and Seattle. Turnover will give this ball. 
back to the Royals FC. Taylor Lytle had a great chance into the box just before that hydration break. Some pressure there from Press. Barnes winning it for Seattle. Now it's Kristen Westfall making the start at left back today for the rain. Taylor looking for Spencer up the middle. She got her foot to it first, but now won't be able to catch up. What a great burst of speed though there from Jasmine Spencer. And it's such a good ball in from behind by Taylor. She's been pulling out wide. Her and Megan Rapino have been interchanging and Spencer just drifts across the pitch. Really good run, heavy touch. Not reward in the end for that beautiful ball. And Dallin, during the hydration break, you heard a little bit of what Blacko had to say? Yeah, Jen, Blacko and Anofsky, his biggest issue with the team right now is their press. He, he felt like they were not balanced, particularly too much, too many people and too much focus on the far side of the field. They wanted the, the press to be more aggressive, more in sync, line to line, and find a way to create more turnovers, more opportunities like we just see right there. Jody Taylor trying to beat this ball to the end line, doesn't quite do it. And you do have to think about, I mean, you asked Blacko this week, Ali, about if they would try to take advantage of the fact that it's been such a busy week for Utah, this being their third match. And he said, absolutely. And he said, let's weather the storm early, and then we're going to try to play high tempo, press them when we can, pick them off in high spots on the pitch. <laughs> But they've been controlling the game since really the kickoff, so I don't even think there was a storm to weather early on. Megan Rapino is going to have to come back. Nice looking throw, though. <laughs> and always looking quick these days. <laughs> Saw that in the Tournament of Nations a couple of times, didn't we? A well timed throw. And you just wonder why more players don't do it. Yes. Get to the ball quickly, see if anything's on, otherwise, slow it down. Westfall. Taylor is up and over her head. Moros made it back to Smith. Haven't seen that big leg of Abby Smith too often. Both of these goalkeepers, anytime they've had a goal kick in this match, taken the opportunity to try to build, play it short rather than just unleash the long ball. Rapino trying to win it. has one player in yellow at the top. It was Chris Press. Sauerbrunn didn't get a lot onto that ball. It was just enough out of the reach of Taylor. Seattle out shooting Utah four to nothing so far in this match. Seattle in second place in the standings, 33 points. Utah 28 points currently in six. But a win could put them into that top four, at least for now. More matches, of course, tonight. Most importantly, as far as they're concerned, that one with Portland and Orlando. Nielsen sends a ball out of bounds and a lot behind it, but just not exactly where she wanted to direct it. But again, it's Allie Long pulling the string. She plays that cutting ball into Morgan Andrews. I think they've been playing incredibly well in this early going of the match today together. Good chemistry there. Morgan Andrews getting her head up. She's actually played a couple diagonals that have opened things up for Seattle. There's a little bit of that press. You could see Jody Taylor at the head of it. A good step in for Moister. But ideally, Seattle wanted to win that ball sooner, much higher up the field. 
Big collision, and then the whistle is eventually blown as Megan Oyster collided with Katrina Gorey. There really are a lot of new faces for both of these teams. You think about a lot of the players from Kansas City moving over to this Utah Royals FC franchise. Seattle also with a good number of changes. 15 new players this season, along with their new head coach, Vlatko Andonovsky. They look pretty comfortable with each other at this point in the season, that's for sure. Got themselves in a very good position and want to continue to hold on to that advantage as best they can, create some separation. Dangerous ball, not a good touch from Westfall. Matheson onto it now for Utah. Just could not turn it into anything. Kristen Westfall, former Florida Gator. Also a first year player with Seattle, was with Boston last season. We might feel that one for a little while. Pretty tough player though, Katrina Gorey. Back in the NWSL this season for the first time since winning the championship with Kansas City in 2014. Lock, little back heel toward Rapino. It is incredible that she does find space as many players as teams commit around her, Megan Rapino. Well, a lot of that was Fishlock's movement. She's the one who pulled wide. Initially, it dragged one of the Utah center mids out of space, and then Rapino shifted in, and then they recognized there was a shift in their personnel and spaces. So they're toying with that, that relationship between Rapino and Fishlock. Rapino, fish lock, a bump from Bowen, but no whistle. Our referee here, Tattersall, right there on top of it said, uh uh. And now Kristen Press has a lot of space. Nielsen with some excellent recovery speed, but the hold up from Press had a chance to get her shot up before. Now takes it, and it is saved in the corner. Lydia Williams called into action. And is up to the challenge. An end-to-end -end stuff here in Seattle on one side, and then Utah with the quick, quick break. They play that diagonal out to press, and then she just drives centrally, always looking for a shot. You get that run from Gory across to distract the defender, and she opens up a little bit of a window, and press releases it. But good reaction save. We saw it late, more than likely Lydia Williams to the ground. Both Seattle goalkeepers, Lydia Williams, Michelle Betos, have been terrific this year. One, two, and save percentage in the league. Mentioned those seven shutouts for Lydia Williams as well. Most in the league this season. And here comes Press again. Two goals and one assist for Press in her seven appearances so far. This is number eight. Will she have another? Press, nice move. The left-footed shot, though, too high. And it all seems so slow at this point, but Press is really just sizing up Morgan Andrews, gets her to bite on it, and then she's trying to curl it in that far post. This was the opportunity from Seattle on the opposite side of it. It was an interplay between Rapino and Fishlock, and sure enough, it looks like Sauerbrunn goes to ground and gets the ball first. Good no call. And I do know that if you get the ball first, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a no call, but I think in that situation, it played out well for the referee, not Rapino. Coming up on the Ford Halftime Show, we'll take a look at Seattle's Yael Averbush as she looks toward the future. Plus, we will break down this first half. Ford, a go further. Will we have a goal to talk about? Spencer made that save an easy one for Abby Smith. When Utah goes into their locker room at halftime, they're going to have to discuss how to deal with Megan Rapino filtering inside. She's coming in, creating those overloads centrally, and then Fishlock is running off of her.
but her and Taylor are combining really nicely. Fishlock getting in on the action. Taylor Lytle had plenty of time on the ball, gets it over to press. Nielsen stood her up though. Five minutes of stoppage time tacked on here. Remember those two hydration breaks accounting for that. Andrews took a look over her shoulder, played it back to Lauren Barnes, the NWSL Defender of the Year back in 2016. And another key again to this great Seattle defense. What's, what's going to be the difference maker? Seattle certainly had better opportunities in this match so far, but both teams at halftime, what do you think their conversations are going to be? It could be the substitutes coming off the bench. With Stengel in nice form, when I spoke to Laura Harvey before the match, she said, hey, look, let's let some of the other players do the work, and you can reap the rewards at the end. Amy Rodriguez, another one. Arsenal in that woman's pocket there, Laura Harvey. Some weapons on the bench that have come in and changed games for them late in matches. If they can keep Seattle quiet. Perpino. Sauerbrunn blocking that attempt. Those two U.S. national team teammates neck and neck with one another there. armband as press takes it on the other side Moros had a straight path to Gory there Rapino just enough pressure from Lola Banta to break up any intention she may have had See Rapino, a couple moments she's been getting frustrated. Katie Bowen having more play in these last five minutes or so. I think Utah early on wasn't getting the layers underneath the support for Kristen Press. They weren't playing in behind. This last spell or so, they've had some support coming in from Taylor Lytle, Gory. in these conditions we told you about, with all the smoke in the air, it is very hot. we have been getting some great crowds here at Rio Tinto Stadium. Imagine that's affected a little bit today, but those that are here are still doing a great job of making some noise. The drum corps going strong. These matches at home are so important. I'm trying to take advantage of. and the one to eventually come away with it. Gory in the middle of the field, couldn't get around. Oyster. Press has to go back initially. Fishlock coming in. Rapino. Labonte, I believe, was tying her shoe. Now she's back up. And there is space if Seattle can work with it. Taylor coming back to the ball. Previous meetings between these two teams, both 0-0 at the half. We may be headed that direction again. Seattle has had the better of the chances, though Kristen Press, where they have bullet to the corner, also forcing a nice save from Lydia Williams. Jody Taylor has really started to come on for Seattle this season. Seven goals on the season, four of those coming in the last six matches. She was always getting looks. And she started to put them away more. Yeah, and even more so, look at her back to goal play. Look at the runs that she's making. It's creating space for her teammates. 
which has got to be a joy to play with for, for Megan Rapino, for Jazz Spencer, for Fishlock, because the interchange, the interplay between them has been fantastic. I think in the second half, perhaps Megan Rapino should actually isolate herself more on the wing. She had her success early on against Bowen 1v1, and since she's been coming inside, yes, they're, they're attacking down the heart of Utah, but I think there is opportunity out wide. Comes Fishlock. She is tripped by Moros. Nearly through those five minutes of added time. It's a quick kick taken. As a result of much, but could it turn into something for Press in Utah? Kristen Press has Matheson to her right. And just enough pressure on her back from Teresa Nielsen to take that opportunity away. So indeed it is 0-0 after our first 45. And you'd have to think Utah will be the, the happier side knowing that this is their third match in the course of a week, but we'll see what the Laura has to say. Yeah, Laura is now standing by with Dallin. Laura, nil nil at the half. What's going to be your message to the team and your halftime team talk here? Uh, I think we got a little bit better in terms of our defending um, as the half went on when they started to tire, but at the beginning of the half, they were moving it around way too easy. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that. And then when we get it, you've seen that the game can be really transitional in this heat. So we've got to try and punish them on that. Thanks. Appreciate it. Coming up next on the Ford Halftime Show, Jim will take a look at Seattle's Yale Averbush as she looks towards her future when she's no longer a professional soccer player. Planning ahead, plus Jen and Allie will review the first half. Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. USL on Lifetime Ford Halftime Show. Four, go further. Well, welcome back to Rio Tinto Stadium. It is halftime between Seattle and Utah. No yell Averbush today for Seattle, and that's been the case for much of the season as she's really had to step away to focus on her health. Yell played through ulcerative colitis last season and told me wound up very sick. She was bedridden for a couple of months after the season. So it has been a long journey for her to try to get back to full health and back to the field. But in the meantime, she's also a budding businesswoman, finding ways to continue to impact this game for years to come. I talked to Yell earlier today, and she told me she was just blown away when she found out that her app is being used all over the world. It's in 48 different countries. There are also a number of NWSL players who are using it in the offseason, something she is very proud of. But she told me the greatest joy in her day are those few moments she gets to spend with her Seattle teammates. So we certainly wish Yell the very best in her recovery and with her new business. When we continue on the NWSL on Lifetime, Allie Wagner and I will break down the first half. You are watching the Ford Halftime Show, Ford Go Further. One thing that we have to do is just uh, find those spots where, where we were dangerous, find uh, Jess uh, and uh, Pino in the, in the pocket so they can uh, process the ball and uh, move forward and switch point of attack, especially from left to right. Thanks, appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Seattle outshot Utah in that first half, five to two. As we showed you at halftime, certainly had the better of the opportunities, although Kristen Press did have a couple of good looks for Utah as well. A reminder at what's at stake here. Seattle in second place in the standings, currently with 33 points. Utah in sixth place with 28 points. So think about what a huge week this could be for Laura Harvey's team. She said it, she knew it would be a critical week. They already have six points. She said that's what she wanted to, at a minimum, get out of this. But if they could get nine points out of this week, move themselves into the top four, that could really be a big point for this team going forward. Katie Bowen is trying to get it through there for Kristen Press. No Amy Rodriguez, no Katie Stangle to start this match for Utah. Taylor Lytle getting the start along with Kristen Press in the attack. Morgan Andrews looking up for Seattle. It falls down right toward Jody Taylor and Megan Rapino also lingering around the ball. It's going to be an early corner kick opportunity. We only had one in the first half. 
That was by Seattle. So this their second. Rapino was a target on the one in the first half, and that's how she scored the game's only goal. The last meeting between these two teams, a one nothing win for Seattle. Going to play this one short to Fishlock. Now Rapino will deliver the ball in. Megan Oyster putting it back into a dangerous spot and it's finished off. Jess Fishlock, her first goal of the season. She has now scored in every NWSL season. And another set piece dagger for Seattle against Utah. It's not on the initial one, it's on the resurface. And Abby Smith comes fishing. She goes for it initially, and then she's caught off her line. I don't even know if she stands up and she's in a good role, if she's gonna be able to make a play on this, because this is rifled right by her. Brilliant finish as the ball is feathered in from Megan Oyster and Jess Fishlock out of nowhere, unmarked. Clear path to the ball, hammers that one home. What a huge goal that was for her. Mentioned it is her first of this season, but been used to seeing her put him away throughout her career with Seattle at one point or another. Four-time member of the best 11, had seven goals last season. That one giving her team the advantage early here in the second half. For Utah, here's what's coming up. They hit the road, that's the bad news. The good news is they play the two teams at the bottom of the table, so a chance to pick up some points potentially, and then Chicago coming here in September. Every match, every point so crucial at this stage, especially for Utah, which finds themselves on the outside looking in at the playoff picture at the moment. Laura did say this week that she didn't feel as though this game was a must win. But I think having gone into halftime at nil-nil, giving themselves a chance to get that win, get those 30 points, they're going to be disappointed to concede in the early goings, especially on a set piece. Because if you fall asleep on your markers, you're just asking for trouble. And that's what happened with Utah, a mental lapse. And you knew that goal off of a corner kick the last time these two teams met still burned a little bit. Now it's adding some salt to the wound. Gunny Yon's daughter, relatively quiet first half for her. Sends this one out of bounds. And that's part of her role as we get a good look at her recovery run to sit right next to Lola Bonta in those defensive midfield slots. So you're not going to see her as involved in the attack as much. It's going to be gory. You should be hitting those half spaces. But nonetheless, she does make some of those darting runs to pull apart the opposition's midfield. That's just too easy. Morgan Andrews with the acres of space to work there in behind that initial line of pressure from Utah. I think we've seen that a couple of times, whether it be Morgan Andrews or Ali Long even, that when they receive the ball, they have time and space to figure out where they want to put it. Part of that is the aggressive rotation of Seattle, the way they split their center backs and push their outside backs high. Hello, Labanta. Now Bowen trying to connect with Matheson. In case you missed our first half, not only is it hot here in Sandy, Utah today, it is hazy with some of the wildfires both here in the state of Utah and some of the wind blowing smoke over from the fires in California. So due to that, trying to be extra cautious in terms of this match, and we will have two hydration breaks per half. and stepping in to win it, but it's taken right back by Moros. Now Spencer on the ball. Jasmine Spencer, fleet of feet, goes back to her. The shot to the corner is saved by Smith.
Hey, Jen, just to add in terms of the heat and the temperature right now, we have not seen, in the haziness, we've not seen any of the players use the oxygen that is behind both benches yet. In terms of the heat where I'm standing, we've been in the shade. It's about 90, low 90s right now. But on the field, all the players are on the field, and it's sunny in the entire landscape of the field right now. The only thing helping them, I guess, is about 8% humidity. So it is a dry heat, whatever that is, it was worth. But it is still hot out here. I think you should go find the sun, Dallin, and give us a true that's report that, that's what of I the was heat. Thinking. You know, a, re a really good reporter would do that, but apparently you guys don't have one. <laughs> hey, well, that came from someone standing in a lot of shade. And here's a fish lock again from distance trying her luck. Pressure from Taylor. Of course, he just looking for somewhere to go. Lauren Barnes. She'll take a shot from distance, just a little high, but. There are a lot of spaces opening up for these Seattle players. Yeah, and it's all just stemmed from Utah being squeezed into the flank. They couldn't solve the pressure. They got careless and just played it forward. Corsi did. She ran out of options, really. And then Seattle comes with one really look from far from Barnes. Let's remember that this is a hungry Seattle team, and especially those players who have been there, like Lauren Barnes, like Jess Fishlock and Megan Rapino. Yes, Seattle were the Shield winners in 2014, 2015, and lost in the final both of those years to, by the way, Black Cone and <laughs> in Kansas City. But the last two seasons, they finished fifth outside the top four and have not been to the playoffs this year, trying to make that change. Levanta caused some problems for Ali Long. Here's Spencer. Cross. It is headed down and out. Rapino going to work on the far side. ask you, Allie, we heard teammate or coaches talk about Megan Rapino potentially being the best in the world right now. Where do you put her in that? Maybe in the conversation? Absolutely in the conversation. Absolutely. I would put Sam Kerr there first, however. Yeah, it's hard to deny what the rating NWSL MVP Sam Kerr has done both here in the NWSL and in an international stage. She's been tremendous as we have our first change for Utah. Desiree Scott will replace Katrina Gorey. And that's a player is welcome to see her back on the field. Mentioned she had missed the last two matches dealing with injury and is a real force to be reckoned with in the midfield, Canadian international. Rapino's cross to the far post. Spencer trying to get up for it. Well, five foot one of her. Seattle really seems energized, as you might expect after that goal from Jess Fishlock in the 48th minute. Katie Bowen has Matheson to her right. Kristen Press central. Levanta. That pass off its mark. Seattle hoping to get the win on the road here. Here's what they have coming up. It's a bit of an odd schedule. They're all midweek games. Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But at least they do have full rest between those matches. That's the good news there. And then they'll finish up in that match at Portland, September 7th. We'll be there for that one. It's always a great rivalry match and certainly one of the highlights of our season so far when we had that match earlier in the season. It was tremendous, a 3-2 win for Seattle at Portland. 
in their first meeting back on May 5th. Fish lock. Rapino, just enough space to get the ball off. She doesn't need much. No, but again, she's toying with defenders, just skipping by that first line of pressure. It was Taylor Lytle she had beat, then she gets her head up. Desiree Scott's trying to step to her, but the back line can't step because there's not enough pressure on the ball. They have to track that run. Can't connect at that back post. Some of the best opportunities in this match have come from set pieces. Seattle's goal started with a corner kick on the other side that Megan Rapino eventually sent in. And Jess Fishlock heading it home. See what the rain come up with this time around. Left footed service toward that back post. Morgan Andrews was the player trying to get it in the air. Tickets to the 2018 NWSL Championship game are currently on sale. That game will be played at Providence Park in Portland, Oregon on Saturday, September 22nd, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, broadcast live on Lifetime. For more information, go to nwslsoccer.com. Both of these teams would love to be able to be there at Providence Park for that match. <laughs> you gotta love that Megan Rapino just tried to line that one up from about seven yards in front of the top of the circle. <laughs> and you know what? She can get away with that. Oh yeah. Because while that one didn't find its mark, we've seen ones that certainly have, even from distance. I'd still give her an earful, though. <laughs> She'd expect it, I imagine. <laughs> Moros has plenty of space to work with along this sideline, trying to take advantage of it. Press, turns, gets around the defense, has some space to serve. She does. Far post header from Matheson. Not enough to beat Williams. And this is an attack that doesn't look like there's much on. It's just Kristen Press dancing, beating a couple players and getting around the edge ultimately, and then just trying to drift that one to the back post for Diana Matheson, who'd held her run. That's the thing with Utah's attack so many times is that it, there's not a lot of numbers forward. He's still able to make an opportunity there with Kristen Press. Labonta, some pressure here. Crowd frustrated with that whistle. Allie Long, definitely down on the ground. Initially, it looked like Lola Bonta was just doing a really good job of being a pest and harassing Long. May have committed the foul there at the end of that interaction. We'll take a look. And this is a look for Seattle. Allie Long drops between the center backs. Try to pick up possession, and then Labonta comes from behind. Hard to see there. And we do have our first hydration break here of this second half. We'll stick around for this one as the players go to the side, get hydrated. It does have to be a bit odd from a playing standpoint, though I'd imagine to have this many breaks, Allie, or what would you think? Absolutely. I mean, I remember in the only time I've experienced it was in the NC2A championships when they'd stop for TV timeouts. <laughs> yeah. And a big thing with our coach, Jerry Smith, said, look, you have to refocus like it's the start of the game, like it's the start of a half because it's a massive breakage of time. And this is when you tend to let down and mental lapses occur and, and you can concede. There's Dallin in the background lurking, <laughs> creeping up. Trying to get us some report there of what Laura Harvey may have had to say and was about to say potential game-changing type players on the bench for Utah. In particular, Amy Rodriguez being one of those, a part of those championships with FC Kansas City. Katie Stengel has had the game winner for Utah the last couple of matches as well, also on the bench and available for Laura Harvey. So Amy Rodriguez 
will come on to the field, take the place of Taylor Lytle, and see if she can make a difference. Ooh, very different players, Taylor Lytle. Yes, she can play the winger, but I, I spoke about it before. She has become more of a connector for Utah. Amy Rodriguez is someone that's going to stretch the lines and look to play between the center backs of Seattle. Or if she stays in a winger role, just get around the edge, bring that pace, stretch the back line of Seattle. Two goals, one assist on the season for Amy Rodriguez. She also leads this Utah team in shots on the season. As you guys so astutely noticed, I was creeping behind <laughs> Laura Harvey's huddle. Uh, and listening to that, her main message was they've got to press. They've got to sign away in the next last 30 minutes. The pressure, Seattle, they're going to try to play out of the back. That's not going to change. They need to hit, be on the ball, increase that pressure. You've got another hydration break coming. They have to find a way to get turnovers to help generate some opportunities because offensively they haven't been able to really break down Seattle when they've had the ball. Yeah, and winning high on the pitch, bring Amy Rodriguez in with her pace. She can close down space so quickly defensively. Great pick up there. Great positioning, Dallin. <laughs> and at this point, you know, why, why wouldn't you go for it? Push here if you're Utah. Said that to be able to pick up the three points here really would be almost like a bonus for the week that they've already had. But look, you're, you're just down one goal. And it's not going to hurt if you expose yourself a little bit. Go after it. And part of that, though, is changing the mentality of the players, and that's playing forward. It's not always being so conservative in their, their options in possession. And I think it's also movement. They look, yes, it's their third game, so I've been giving them a bit of a pass in the week, but they've looked rather stagnant offensively. I don't think the movement has been there to pull apart Seattle to find options. They're not changing it as well. Laura Harvey said one of the keys to the way we play is being able to just swing it, change it, get it to that weak side. You haven't seen that often enough today. And we talked about it a little before, but there is certainly still a transition period. And what a great addition Kristen Press is to this team. But it, it takes time to figure out it, not just for her, but for the players around her. Where does she want the ball? Where do you make your run? Where do I make my runs? And Katie Stengel has maybe figured that out a little bit the last <laughs> couple of matches as she's found some space and made the most of it. Two late game winners. So what a week she's having. I hope she goes and sits in the chair. If she, if she gets a chance for a goal, I think she needs to go back to the throne chair. She did that once earlier this season. I mean, it's there. She should sit in it. And I would bet if she could find a way to get in this game and get a goal, maybe. Press. Not tomorrow. Spencer quickly coming over and being disruptive. Foul will go against Utah here as Jody Taylor was brought down. Rachel Corsi recently picking up her 100th international appearance with Scotland in June. It's an exciting time for a lot of these players. We've got World Cup qualifiers that have either already gone on or are coming up soon. Of course, the CONCACAF qualifiers for the United States coming up in the fall, in October, here in the US. Taylor could have a chance to get onto this ball. She's still running for it. Abby Smith had to come out and bail Corsi out. Jan's daughter looking for Rodriguez. Amy Rodriguez brings it down. She and Nielsen. Foul is called against Rodriguez. And this is better from Utah. The diagonal ball out wide, and then Nielsen comes across, wins the ball. Amy Rodriguez just trying to pull her back there to get the advantage. But with Utah now, it looks as though they're having a more aggressive attacking shape with their four in the back line, perhaps the two center mids just protecting in front of them and allowing the other four at least to establish some pressure on that back line, play more direct. 
We'll see if that becomes a pattern. Nice touch there from Morgan Andrews. There's Nielsen. Rodriguez quickly picks it up, looking for that quick throw in the direction of press. Oyster covering. And that is such a good example of what Laura Harvey talked about. My players need to play forward more often because we'll get a throw in deep in the opposition's end. Well, that was it. Just an aggressive mentality, go at the opponent. They have been a team that's hard to beat. They had that from the start of the season. But now she knows they need to be a team that's a little more aggressive on that offensive end. Moros, all that work, unfortunately for her, then gave it away. Teresa Nielsen, Danish international. In her first year in the NWSL, settled in nicely at that right back spot. Bowen. Rapino. Desiree Scott trying to chase her down. Rapino cuts it across. Now back. For Taylor, those two developing quite a connection. Here comes Fishlock. And it's a credit to Utah in the way that they have played the last few minutes in particular that we have not said Rapino or Fishlock all that often. Jody Taylor had that nice run on a long ball trying to get onto it. Across to Labanta, who is fouled. Going to have a substitution, so they're going to have to try this one again. And it will indeed be Katie Stengel coming into the match for Utah, so she'll replace Diana Matheson. And while Matheson is a piece in the attack as well, I think now you might look at this Utah team and say they are at full attacking power in terms of their front three in particular. Yeah, and with Amy Rodriguez and Katie Stengel specifically, they were managing their minutes because of, of what was popping up on their trackers these days. There's so much technology behind it. And now they've got some real goal, goal scoring potency on the pitch with Stengel checking in. Who would have thought she'd be their leading goal scorer at this point in the season? And she has taken advantage of some of that space. And then you and Dallin talked about this. It's been created by press in particular. Rapino is just going to clear the ball out of imminent danger. A lot of the play's gone through Bowen in this half for Utah on that far side of the field. Here's Scott. All three changes have been made for the Royals FC. Moros kind of in between Press and Rodriguez that time. But again, at least they're looking for that threaded ball in behind. Rapino, still just reminding Abby Smith she's there. Mm -hmm. I love what Jess Fishlock told us, though, about Rapino, you know, coming back from Tournament of Nations, where obviously she was very involved for the U.S., winning that title, and got off the plane, came right to training, wasn't going to miss time, wanted to get back out on the field with her team, was in the match the next day. It's a win against Washington. Rodriguez. Into the space, the crowd anticipating something here, but the deflection and it bounces back to Williams. And it's Morgan Andrews again who comes in and, and gets that recovery challenge on Amy Rodriguez. She's your center mid doing the hard work, just goes to ground. She's not anywhere near Amy Rodriguez initially. 
but the late challenge gets that necessary deflection. I think she's been fantastic defensively for Seattle in some of the challenges she's winning in the center of the park. That one obviously was just a recovery effort on the flank. Here comes Utah again. Quick cross sent in. Williams has it. Utah's had 50. 7% of the possession in the second half. So they have been on the ball more. They've created some more opportunities. Moros to Rodriguez. And Moros raises her hand, thinking perhaps that Amy Rodriguez is gonna curl off one of those signature runs we see from her so often. Well, the space is there for Utah. Seattle looks a little more fatigued this half at altitude. Westfall coming across top of the 18, Fishlock. And you wonder if all of it's getting to them a little bit. The heat, the elevation, the smoke in the air. And talking to some people here around the Salt Lake City area, it has been like this for well, they said a couple of weeks that they've, you know, it's been up and down. Rain will clear some out a little bit, but they've had to be dealing with these type of conditions. So perhaps this team just a bit more used to it and try to take advantage. Here's that space where Stangle has been so good. Just a bit of a trip and a card for Fishlock. Seattle's just getting stretched vertically. The back line was dropping off there and there was a big gap the half space between the backs and the center mids. Ultimately, that's where Stengel found herself and Jess Fishlock trying to make the recovery effort there. Gets no ball, all leg of Stengel there, trips her up. Lee slows the counter attack by Utah. Do you have a substitution coming first of the match for Seattle? Kristen McNabb, who started the last game, she will come on for Morgan Andrews. This is more of a defensive substitution for Seattle. McNabb, more of a pure six, a destroyer type that can just sit in front of that back line of Seattle, break things up. And pretty nice job done today, too, by Morgan Andrews, I would say, stepping into that starting lineup for the first time since the end of June, just her third start of the season. We'll see what Utah can do with this opportunity. Katie Bowen certainly has some options. Chris from Press came awfully close on a set piece in the first half in the air. Bowen keeps this ball low and it bounces out. It will be a corner. First of the match for Utah. Wouldn't they love to return the favor and put one in the back of the net off a corner kick. New Zealand International will come take this one as well. Headed, but out of bounds, Jan's daughter. A strong target in the air. And one of the few that was marked up, they're zoning and other moments here, but it's Fishlock who's tied in there. Well, we have another hydration break, so we'll take a quick one as well. Seattle on top, one nothing. Wait, I think we need to switch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Want to unlock exclusive savings and service reminders right in the palm of your hand? It's easy. Muy fácil. Manda por texto la palabra AutoNation a 26227. Y listo. Yeah, and when you text AutoNation to 26227, you'll get the latest service offers and incentives in just seconds. Conmigo 
contigo bailando toda la noche Cerquita de mí al ritmo de amor y de roche Lo que me pide te daré Calypso, un, dos, tres Back in action now after our second hydration break of the half, fourth of this match. One nothing in favor of Seattle. An early goal here to start the second half by Jess yeah, Fishlock Adrian, in the 48th Adrian. minute, but Utah has been pressing. They've looked to grow into the game, gotten on the ball more. Another substitution happening for Seattle, Adriana Leone. Getting set to check in, replace Jasmine Spencer. Just the fifth appearance of the season for Lyon since coming over in a trade from Sky Blue FC in June. Spencer had a good game too. It's really active up there in that front line. Listening to Black Bandanovsky's huddle there at the second hydration break, it wasn't a lot of tactics. It was a lot of the ladies being most vocal, saying, 15 minutes left. We have to be mentally strong, particularly Ali Long, really employing her teammates. It's all about mental strength to persevere through this tough atmosphere and walk out of here with the win. The one tactical thing he did talk about is Krista McNabb, who just subbed in for Morgan Andrews, will kind of play a real defensive midfield role, just sit in front of the back four and try to clean everything up and then clear that thing out and kind of hunker down these last 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, Dallin, the Seattle team wanting to create some separation in that playoff race. It is so tight, six teams within seven points coming into today. And they have a chance to move to 36 points if they can hang on for the win here. That would put them six points clear of Orlando, although Orlando hosting Portland later tonight, so certainly that could change. Desiree Scott. And Utah has found a way to find late goals in both of their wins earlier this week. This is a team that definitely does not give up and has a little more work to do in terms of climbing up that table. Banta, Stengel was hopeful to get the ball, but it was nicely won by Long. You just heard Dallin say how vocal she was in the huddle, trying to will her team to hang on in this one, keep fighting, not give anything away. Megan Rapino not fouled, our referee here, Tanner's all saying. And there's that conservative ball again by Labanta. I know she felt like she probably couldn't ping it out to press. It allows Seattle to recover and then the giveaway by Utah. Those are moments in transition that Laura Harvey wants to take advantage of and Utah's just struggling to do it because that pass isn't coming. McNabb over to Leo. Two second half substitutions for Seattle. So, yeah, it looks like Stangle peels off and uh, spot underneath Amy Rodriguez and Kristen Press who have shifted or switched I should say defensively so she can be their outlet <laughs> C 
Seattle gets to look forward to three straight at home and Memorial Stadium, always a difficult place for any opponents to play. That's what they have coming up after this one. Rapino running after the ball in the corner, quick touch toward the goal, it's off the post. Scott. Stangle stepped in to win it that time. Levanta pops it into space. Seattle would do well if they can continue to make Utah chase here. And there's someone who still has legs. That's Megan Rapino. Come to life in the last five minutes or so again in the second half. Legs and a foot. <laughs> just go ahead and rip one that goes off the post. Yeah, full stride. Press. Nielsen there defensively. It will be a Utah throw. Utah pressed over onto that far side at the moment. Now Scott will try to switch things over through Sauerbrunn and Corsi. They have four players on the back line of Seattle. Through this build, they have brought numbers with them. Can they find the ball? Pound's daughter picks it up. Scott, tons of space. Bowen, it's great service if she can get to it. Had to do a little extra work just to keep it in bounds. Didn't get a cross off. Still on the ball though is Stangle. Rapino. Just toying with Scott. And it does eventually wind up with Utah though. Rodriguez on the far side, press. What a move to get herself free. She's looking for everything on that ball. And initially I thought Stingle should find Amy Rodriguez on the near side, but she finds Press who just rolls her defender. Sees Lydia Williams off her line. I don't know if that's a shot cross seeing Amy Rodriguez ghost from the back post or if she's looking for goal herself. Nonetheless, it's dangerous. Yeah, Williams really having to stretch up for that one. As you said, she was a few steps off. And that's the thing with Utah. When they go at pace, they look dangerous. It's balancing that need to keep possession with being more ruthless in the attack with their decisions, with their passes. Fishlock, goal scorer in this game in the 48th minute. Here comes Leon. Over to Jody Taylor. Insurance is not going to come on that attack. Stengel. Rodriguez crisscrossing in front of her will go all the way to the other side and press. This ball, too easy really for Lydia Williams. Stangle was making a run on the far side. No, oh, but again, it was more aggressive in the mentality with Stangle in the center of the park and Amy Rodriguez coming across, getting that ball in the half space. That decision just to face up, it's a simple one. It sounds simple, but it can open things up for your team. If this scoreline remains, this will be the fifth one nothing win of the season for Seattle. So they haven't scored a ton of goals. They have played off of a really good defense. They only have 18 goals on the season. It was only 17 coming into this match. And the only teams with fewer 
were Washington and Sky Blue FC, so they have found a way to win the tight contest so far. And part of that is their press. I mean, you saw it here just as they squeeze Utah into this near side. Really challenging for some of these squads to solve it. Now here's a defensive substitution again in the form of Alyssa Kleiner coming on for Jody Taylor. As you watch that clock, we will have a minimum of five minutes due to the two hydration breaks that we had in this half added on in stoppage time. It looks like Kleiner is actually going to go over to that left wing spot of Megan Rapino. Rapino will come central, and it's just the pace of Kleiner that's going to be a threat. Yeah, just Flacco trying to get it to his team, the formation he wants. He wants a 4-5-1, trying to get that to Jess Fishlock and then translate it to the rest of the group and see if they can get in the shape that he's looking for. Going to have to do it quickly and figure out their defensive assignments here as Utah moving up the field yet again. Oyster headed it down toward Fishlock. Great touch from Fishlock to escape the oncoming defender. Rapino. Foul against Megan Rapino. Oh, and then Becca Moros showing what she thinks of it. <laughs> I didn't know what happened initially there, Jen. Good catch. Oh, yeah, that. And she'll get a card for that, really truly as she should, regardless of what you think of the call. And first, Rapino did incredibly well to hold that ball up. Obviously, Laura Harvey knows Rapino very well. She was screaming to her team, don't foul, don't foul, she's gonna go down. And as soon as she was even breathed on, she did exactly that and got the call. It may have been a light foul, I'll allow that. But it's smart. You know the challenge is coming. <laughs> you know it, you ride it. Megan Rapino trying to help her Seattle team hang on, get this win on the road so they can go back home, try to solidify that spot. Remember, the top two teams in the playoffs get to host semifinal matches. We already know one semifinal is going to be in Cary, North Carolina. The Courage, who have claimed the regular season title, and Seattle trying to make a bid to be that number two team. They're going to have to play through eight minutes, though, at minimum here of stoppage time. Rapino to the corner. Morris able to just take it and go. Press. Katie Bowen has done a ton of running on that far side for Utah in this match. She slows it up. Didn't like what she saw. Stengel has come wide. Both Rodriguez and Press are central. The lofted ball toward Press. It is headed down into the area. Rodriguez chasing after it. Got to it before any Seattle player did. And that effort earned her team a corner. Well, it's Katie Stangle playing provider in this moment. You got two runners just circling around one of the center backs there. And then Amy Rodriguez picks up that knockdown. The last one went toward Gunny Yon's daughter, who was closely marked by Jess Fishlock. Headed out of the air by Allie Long. Everybody up for Utah. Abby Smith is standing just inside midfield. They have all the numbers they can into this attack. Press, waited for it like she was trying to line up exactly what she wanted to do. Well, that wasn't it, though. Yeah. 
We got Stangle. It looks like she might have been in an offside position. They don't call it, but this ball is just hanging up for Kristen Press. She wants to go unload on it, but the pressure is coming from Moros there. Excuse me, Barnes as she's closing down, gets the Meg. Can't connect in the end. Leon will send Rapino. And Rapino is going to say, come and get it. Which Moros and Jan's daughter do. Stangle wanted to turn. Allie Long knew exactly where she was going to go with the ball. Laura Harvey and Utah have yet to beat the Seattle team this season. She came into this match feeling like her team owed Seattle one. She felt they'd had the better of the play the two previous matches, didn't get the results. But her former team still hanging on to this one goal advantage they earned in the 48th minute through Jess Fishlock. And at this point, you know they'd be happy with picking up a point just to get the equalizer. Could it come here? Kristen Press, a shot, but she misses. Oh boy, that may have been the equalizer on her foot right there. And it's Becky Sauerbrunn who serves this in. Stangle doesn't even rise up for it. It actually skips over the top off the head of Oyster. And this lands right at the feet of Press. Her first touch isn't a great one. It takes her away from goal, maybe a little bit away from Nielsen pressure coming. But she can't get around it. Rifle that one far post, skims it off. Kristen Press may have actually had a little more time than she thought on, on that shot. And again, I think her first touch let her down. It just didn't allow her to attack the ball. I mean, Utah's look more dangerous with Stangle coming into the play, Amy Rodriguez included. And I think they've just been more aggressive with their mentality and their decision making. Abby Smith. a good chance those players were actually offside on that ball come from, from Abby Smith being played out. Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez were slow to get back on. Stengel tripped up after nifty little move. How good is that by Katie Stengel? <laughs> Former Wake Forest Demon Deacon. It's one way to beat the press when they're trying to squeeze you into the flank. So now Katie Bowen will come to this side. She has been the one to deliver on set pieces. She wins it back nearly. Rapino somehow kept it away from her. Nice touch outside of the foot from Rapino to Leon. Difficult ball for Abby Smith to really get much behind that time. Corsi looking for Rodriguez. It's a beautiful ball to Amy Rodriguez. Press is central. Just the final product lock lacking. Her run was so good. Corsi got her head up. She has time and space. Amy Rodriguez had spun out, curled her run, allows her to come in on that ball instead of having it fail away. But then her cross just tails out. And even so, Press was cutting toward her. So even had that ball curved in. You know, I think she was aiming for Stangle at the back post. You couldn't see it in, in that shot there, but I think she was coming late and just couldn't hook it enough. Disappointing end to what looked to be a promising run and set up for Utah. They're going to keep attacking, though. Press, remember, had an opportunity inside the area. Just went a little wide off of her left foot. Over seven minutes into our minimum of eight minutes of stoppage time, Labanta 
had Sauerbrunn making the run. And why not? Seattle only has one player high. You can afford to throw numbers forward. Corsi sends it in, out of the reach of press. And you really almost feel, and I know there were other factors involved in terms of the lineup changes, this being the third match in a week for Utah, but the way they have pressed and been more aggressive since going down is probably the way Laura Harvey would like to see them play more from the beginning of a match. I think you're spot on, Jen. But to your point earlier, I think the insertion of Katie Stengel and Amy Rodriguez probably also helps with that. And factor in that Seattle was up one nothing. Do they start to sit back and be more conserved? And that's when Utah pounces. But Jess Fishlock was the one who pounced on her first goal of the season. And that snaps what had been a disappointing road stretch for the Seattle Reign FC. They pick up the one nothing victory after going winless in their last four road matches. Pick up the big three points, move to 36 points to stay securely in that second place spot on the table behind North Carolina. We'll give you a look at the updated standings. North Carolina already secured the regular season title with those 50 points. You see the 36 from Seattle. So they're gonna stay in second no matter what else happens later tonight. And Jess Fishlock getting her first goal of the season down. It was a game winner. It was the game winner. Congratulations, Jess. Phenomenal performance. Affectionately known by some as the locker. Impressive showing by you guys. How difficult was this game? The air quality, the altitude, the heat. How hard was this physically and mentally? Within 10 minutes, I couldn't get my breath. Like my throat was dry and my chest was dry. Um, people talk about coming here and it's going to be hard for you. And they're not wrong. It's a very difficult place to come and play. And um, that's why this result is huge for us. Not just the win, but coming here in this heat against Utah, how close the playoffs are right now. That win for us was honestly of a huge magnitude. No doubt you guys go back to Seattle three straight games now. You did have the game winning goal. You've now scored in every NWSL season. It's an illustrious list. Ali Long is part of it, Rapino and other greats of this league. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's about time I got a goal, let's be, let's be honest. Um, no, it's great, you know, I, I'm so happy with the way that I've been playing all season and, you know, I haven't been getting the goals, but my performances have allowed others to have space and, and then get goals. So, off the back of my injury coming in, I feel in a really good place right now, so I'm just looking forward to the next games and getting momentum and, and, and just really enjoying what I'm doing right now. Thanks a lot. Go enjoy with your teammates. Congratulations. Positivity is so infectious. When we spoke to her this week, she talked about the, her movement opening up space for others. She alluded to it there. She's an integral part. Yes, that is her first goal, but she is so key to the way the Seattle uh, team can go about play with unleashing Rapino, unleashing Jody Taylor now that they have a true nine and whoever hit the